Tonight we're going to be talking about the proposal which was uh, made public tonight uh, by the Armenian, Turkish, and uh, their foreign ministries about protocols with which Armenia and Turkey are going to move forward. Joining me in studio is Vikan Sonens Papazian, ANC Western Region Chairman, and also Aram Hamparian, ANCA Executive Director. Vikan, summarize what this process today was all about. Well, from what we know, Paul, um, uh, the governments of Armenia and Turkey entered into what they call a protocol to normalize relations uh, and establish diploma diplomatic relations. Uh, this was evidently brokered by the Swiss and uh, there are obvious problems with it that I think Adam Hamparian will go into detail of. Uh, but primarily my biggest concern is, and I guess to give you <coughs> a general uh, criticism of what I've been able to glean from the documents that have been presented so far. It's essentially predicated on a lie. Uh, I'll give you an example. Um, any marriage has to be based on mutual trust and honesty. Okay? And that's true of a marriage between individuals and a marriage between states. What we have here is a proposed marriage between two separate states, but it's predicated on this idea that Turkey may have not committed genocide, or at least, at the very least, that Turkey is not being forthright about the Armenian genocide, acknowledging the genocide, or dealing with the consequences of the genocide. And that's entailed in a lot of the document. And for that reason, I think it's uh, doomed to failure, because again, it's, it's not uh, an intellectually honest and politically honest document. What are some of the points that this proposal specifically is saying that we can say honestly that they're lies that you know, we should not move forward with them? Well, a couple of things. Um, one thing that's very striking that's been proposed in the past is this idea of creating a historical commission to examine the events of 1915. It would be uh, cons uh, consisting of a delegation of historians or quasi-historians from Armenia and Turkey and purportedly there to sit down and kind of sort out what happened in 1915. Simple fact is that uh, what happened in 1915 is well known. Uh, it, today in, in discussing this issue with a, a reporter from National Public Radio, I said, you know, there's this saying that you don't have to draw two parallel lines all the way to the moon to prove that they don't intersect. Okay? At some point a fact becomes simply that, a fact. And here, the fact of the Armenian Genocide is well established, uh, and as such, we need to move forward and talk about the legal consequences of the genocide and not move backward and, and give any kind of um, credence to those who would contend that the genocide never occurred or that it's something other than a genocide. And I know Adam has some thoughts about the, the yeah. document itself. Adam Hamparian, Executive Director of ANCA, uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, what are your thoughts about these proposals? Uh, they they're seem very much like a surrender of Armenian rights, of uh, the truth of the genocide, and um, very significantly Armenian security. Uh, in terms of rights, uh, here we have uh, the Armenian government under a lot of pressure, uh, um, holding out hope that Turkey is acting in good faith, but it's clear now that Turkey is not acting in good faith, holding out hope uh, that there's going to be some benefit down the road, um, agreeing, for example, um, to, to ratify the current borders when there are some very profound um, and very legitimate issues that need to be resolved on that score, um, surrendering uh, um, uh, ground on the uh, veracity of the genocide by agreeing to a historical commission, which uh, sadly uh, is, a, is an attempt to enlist Armenia in you know uh, putting a question mark over whether there's a genocide, which obviously has been a Turkish denial tactic for years. And finally, um, uh, backing away from Armenia's security. There, there was an element in there that said um, Armenia, in addition to not doing anything contrary to good neighborly relations, I'm not sure what that means, but also said that Armenia should not, uh, none of the parties should interfere in the, in the life of uh, other countries. Well, there happens to be a, a remaining Armenian community in uh, Turkey uh, that has been victimized uh, ever since the genocide, and, and they deserve to be defended. And um, Armenia has a security stake in seeing Turkey end its genocide denial and, and uh, you know, um, evolve beyond this kind of genocidal approach toward Armenia. And um, the idea that we're not, as Armenians, going to speak to those issues is is, is um, ridiculous. Um, Paul, there's one thing that uh, I want to point out, which was one of the provisions of this um, uh, these protocols says that neither party will do anything that is contrary to the spirit of good neighborly relations. Uh, consider what that means. Not that the act of genocide
genocide committed against the Armenian people, the murder of a million and a half people, and the very near annihilation of an entire uh, race, uh, not is not to act contrary to good neighborly relations, but rather the discussion of that on the part of the Armenians uh, is what Turkey is talking about when they say that people shouldn't do, uh, the party shouldn't do anything contrary to the spirit of good neighborly relations. It's, it's a um, Orwellian kind of Alice in Wonderland scenario, and I can. Uh, that this, this, these protocols are fraught with dangers. They uh, have been negotiated in secret, and uh, uh, now that they're uh, out in the public, they need to be the subject of tremendously vigorous debate and discussion because uh, there are many, many dangers uh, on the Armenian side. Um, they, they are, in a sense, a parallel to the Madrid principles, which, again, you know, would put Armenia at severe disadvantage, which would cement in, lock in major strategic, strategic disadvantages uh, on the Armenian side on the Karabakh issue. Similarly, that's what this would do um, in terms of Turkey Armenian relations. So there's some serious, serious problems here that the Armenian people need to look at, not simply a, a small handful of people, uh, you know, who, who uh, sit in the president's office. Um, we're losing you if you could speak up a little uh, louder. There's also been backpedaling after the announcement that was made today, and there seems to be talk that the uh, border opening is not anywhere as a signpost in this upcoming uh, transaction or just dialogue. Well, the one constant is Turkey is constantly trying to... Uh, to move U.S. recognition and international recognition, you know, move it six months, three months, six months into the future. They're constantly moving the ball down the, uh, the goalpost, down the field. And uh, that's what uh, happened on April 22nd. Turkey implied that there would be an imminent uh, opening of the border and then quickly switched it over to the Karabakh talks and, and kicked it down the road, uh, you know, uh, four or five, six months. Now they're doing the same thing. They're going to buy themselves a few months of time, but when they're actually asked, you know, what does that time frame mean, uh, Damodoglu says today, well, we're not ready to open the border. Well, if Turkey's not willing to, to deliver an open border, what exactly are they delivering, right? Nothing. What is the Armenian side conceding? Well, if they were to go through with this protocol, they'd be conceding a lot. Uh, and the same is true of what's happening um, on the Karabakh side, in the Madrid talks. The, the, the concessions on the Armenian side are immediate, they're irrevocable, and they're very specific. The concessions on the Turkish or Azeri side are always uh, very vague and always something that may happen in the future. This is some extremely, extremely uh, um, um, dangerous steps that the, uh, uh, a very small handful of people uh, in the government uh, are considering. Um, we are in touch with uh, um, people at different levels of government. Uh, in the diplomatic corps, in, in government in Armenia, uh, who were not aware of this. I think that this is honestly uh, a process that was handled by a very small group of people who now need to answer uh, for what they've done uh, and, and bring the Armenian people into this debate. Um, it's very troubling to me that we, as Armenian Americans, the builders of the capital on the genocide question and the defenders of Karabakh um, and the right to self-reformation of the people there, are uh, uh, left in the dark on these issues. While the Turkish Foreign Ministry and others, the Swiss, the U.S. State Department, are apparently uh, conducting all sorts of, um, you know, uh, diplomacy uh, at the expense of uh, the cause of our lives. Thank you, Adam. Um, this story is being just developing, so throughout uh, the next 24 hours, throughout the next week, check nca.org or aspares.com for updates on this. Uh, final 30 seconds, Vikan. People are outraged. What should they do? Well, I think they need to, as Adam said, uh, talk about the many contradictions and how dangerous this document is and how it puts Armenia at a distinct disadvantage compared to these amorphous uh, responsibilities supposedly on the side of the Turks and the Azerbaijanis. And, you know, we're all stakeholders in this particular process. It's not people just in Armenia. It includes the entire diaspora. Okay. Thank you very much, Viken. And thank you, Adam. Uh, Viken Sonets, Papazian, ANC, Western Region. Um, and Aram Hamparian from ANCA, Executive Director of ANCA.